Okay, kids, it's time for the excitement that you have been waiting for. It is time for us to look at our CBA1 test results and scorecard. So you're going to have to use two separate things. So for those of you here in class, you have been given a paper copy of your CBA1 results. And for those of you at home in remote learning, I emailed you a copy of your CBA1 results. And if you have gone to Schoology, you have found the slides that you are going to be copying and pasting into the data tracking section of your digital notebook. So your CBA1 scorecard should now be in the data tracking section of your digital notebook and you should have your slide or your copy of your results handy. We're going to use them both. So the first thing we need to figure out is what is your star rating. So I want to give you guys a little notice that number nine, if you will look very carefully over here on the paper, this person got number nine correct. And it was, the correct answer was A. Now, what I need you guys to know is that it has been decided that that question was not a great question. So we counted everybody's number nine correct. So regardless of what it says on this paper, you did get your number nine correct. So this person has number nine and they had it correct. So their score is accurate. They had 13 out of 18, which is a 72%. So over here where I have number of questions correct, I look up at the top left. Can I make it even bigger for you guys? Can I make it bigger? Look at that, I can. So they had 13 out of 18. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and type in and I'm gonna use a color just so that you guys can tell what I'm adding in there. I'm gonna use a nice purple because I feel like it. So I'm gonna add in 13. Oh, I thought I was making it a color, but apparently I, I lied to you. Sorry. Let me try it again. 13. Oh, this area says too much effort. All right. Wait, here. I'm going to do it again. And. Woohoo! Look at that success. Sounds fantastic. Okay. So if I had a 13 out of 18. Now, the first thing I want you guys to do is before you put in that raw score with the percent, okay, and in fact, you don't have to worry about the percent at all. That really doesn't affect you much right now. So I want you to make sure that you have checked your number nine. Like I said, number nine, the correct answer initially was A. So if you on your test put A, then it automatically counted your test correct. And so this raw score, 13 out of 18 or whatever it is, is correct. If, however, on your test, it marked number nine is wrong, you're going to go ahead and give yourself an extra question. So let's pretend that this number nine had been counted wrong. Instead of putting the 13 out of the 18, I would automatically give myself one more because we're giving everybody credit for number nine regardless. Sorry if that's confusing but it's to your benefit. So now to figure out my star rating, I'm simply going to look. I have 13 out of 18. 13 out of 18 is right here. It's in the meets category. So my star rating, let's see if I could actually get the purple right this time, my friends. Ooh, look at me go. Okay, so my star rating is meets because I simply find where my number would fall and the number of questions correct, move it over. That's my star rating. So now the question is, how many questions would I need to get right next time in addition to move up? So if the next rating for this person is master's at 17, I subtract 13 from 17. And with my feeble math sc um, skills, I assume that the correct answer for, here we go, the correct answer for 17 minus 13, the number I need to move up is four. So I would have to get four more questions correct the next time in order to move up a star rating. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at my specific teaks to see which ones I got right or wrong. So on your scorecard, we put the teaks in as 2B, 6A, 6C, 8D, 8E, 8F, 9C, and 9D. And next to each one, I gave you a little bit of a description. 
and I actually told you which question number is um, for each TEAK, which question number it was on the test and how many questions there were for each TEAK. So obviously most of the TEAKs had only one or two, but then you've got something that has three questions and these had four each. So they're more important than the others. So I need to know if there's only one question, how many did I get correct for that TEAK? So 2B was number 10. All I'm gonna do guys, is go down here, again, handy dandy, and I'm gonna go through one at a time. So I know question number one was 9C. Question number one was 9C, and I got it correct. So I'm just gonna put a little one there, okay? Question number two, I got wrong. Question number two was 9D, and I know it says 9DV, but we're just counting all the 9Ds together. So 9D, I got wrong. So I'm just going to put in X. Okay, so question number three was a 9C again, and I got it wrong. So I'm putting an X. Question number four was um, a 9C, and I got it correct. So I put another one. Question number five was a 9D, and I got it wrong. Seeing the trend here, kids. Question number six was another D, um, 9D, and I got it right. So the one. Question number seven was a 9C, and I got it right. There's another one. And question number eight was a 9V, um, 9D, I'm sorry, and I got it right. So look. There were four questions for 9C. Out of the four, I got three right and one wrong. So that's a 75%. So I'm going to make that a high score because three out of four is pretty good. So that was actually a, oh, sorry guys, let me go back. Oopsie scoopsie. Undo. There we go. That was actually a high score. So I'm going to give myself a H high. However, on the 9D, I got two out of four correct. So 50-50 chance of survival is not very good. So I'm going to make that a low. So once again, I'm just putting the number of questions I got correct, high or low. So what I want you to go through and do is for every single one of these questions, you'll know you got it correct because it's all in black. If you have it in red, that means that your answer was incorrect and the correct number is the one that is in parentheses so the correct number is in parentheses what you answered stands by itself so just to go through two more nine was um a and like i told you guys um 6c everybody got number nine correct i'm telling you now whether, whatever it says on here, we're giving you number nine correct. So everybody got that one right in the end. And then it looks like 10 was a 2B and that one was wrong. So again, there was only one question for 2B. I got it wrong. That's clearly going to be my low. Once I have filled out my entire scorecard, so I've gone through all 18 questions. I put down the number I got correct for each. I put down whether it was a high or a low teak for me. So now I'm going to go to the next page. And right here where it says highest teaks, I'm going to choose the three teaks that I got highs for. So hopefully, you know, you have more than three, but I will have, at least, I know at least for right now, this is one of my high teaks. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm simply going to copy the description. 9C was revised drafts. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go down under description. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to simply copy and paste revised drafts. And now I know that one of my strengths as an English one student was 9C, revising drafts, which is good because that's one that most of us needed help with. So that was a high for me. I will choose when I fill the rest of this out, my two other highs. If I don't have three highs, then I fill out as many as I have. And then here's the important part. Here's the lows. So I'm going to do the same thing with the lows, which were the three teaks that I know I need to improve on. So for example, I already have two right here. I know that 2B was a low for me. 
And that is, you know, the, that silly denotative and connotative meaning of words that I know we went over in class, but sometimes it's just really difficult to figure out the simple um, definitions in the text. So again, I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste. So this is the difficulty with this one was connotative and denotative. And I know that that T is to B. So you have to fill out your top three teaks that you need to work on. And again, if you did amazingly and you don't have three, then you fill out the ones you have. And then here's your final step for me, your reflective goal. What is it you want to specifically work on next time so that you know that you can improve? So I know for me, I did not practice enough with commas and I didn't really try and annotate with text evidence to prove my answers. You're going to put whatever your reflection is. What's my goal? Um, I want to get, let's see, I'll be super happy if I can get this like two more correct next time. I feel like that will put me solidly in the meat. So, that is what I'm asking you guys to do for today. You are going to fill out your CBA1 scorecard using your, which you should have a paper copy of, or I should have emailed you through Schoology a copy, um, your CBA1 report. Thank you, friends. God bless. Take care. And you know that we're going to be looking for growth. So don't give, give up and despair. If it's not the score you wanted, we are going to be improving. All right, guys. Thank you.